In this video, you will learn the secrets on how to know if he's not your guy. Hi, I'm Antje Boyd, founder and creator of the Magnetize Your Man Method. And today I have Dr. John Gray here with me who will answer this very question. So don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Let's go ahead and dive right in. This is a great topic. Uh, it really, a lot of the ideas I'll be talking about are in one of my books called uh, <clears throat> Mars and Venus on a Date. Ah, oh, I love it. Okay, Mars and Venus from a date. So ladies, you want to just click that link below. We can maybe put that below as well uh, so you can get that book. So let's talk a little bit about that because what I see so often is women are not being able to see those red flag they can't really read the signs like is he my guy is he not my guy so how do you know that he's not your guy well you know he's not your guy because you're going to know he is your guy so they go hand in hand <laughs> so that's why i mentioned my book on dating because it talks about five stages and it's only it's really only in the fifth stage that you know he is your guy for sure uh in the third stage you're exploring the possibility and experiencing, I think he's my guy. I think he's my guy. So let's go through the stages real quickly. Mm -hmm. The first stage is it's natural in dating. You feel a certain chemistry with somebody, you feel an attraction. And, and we'll go into more details about uh, who's the right person to be attracted to, who's not the right person to be attracted to. Can you trust your attraction? After all, how many times have you felt chemistry with a guy and he turned out to be the wrong guy? So after a while you go, oh, I don't know if I can trust myself. Well, what can I trust? So the big question happens. So we'll, we'll, we'll go into that more deeply. But the second stage is natural. Let's say you are with your soulmate, but you don't know yet. Or let's say you're with your soulmate and you think he's my soulmate. Oh, this feels so good. All right, so either way, the second stage will happen. And that stage is called uncertainty. That's where you'll start to doubt, okay? It's natural to doubt and experience uncertainty. And ironically, women tend to be much more aware of what their feelings are than most men. Could be the other way around, but women tend to be much more aware. And so they're much more aware of their uncertainty and their doubt. And at that time, it's perfectly normal to have uncertainty. For example, if you were to buy my house, you'd come with a bunch of experts, you'd hire experts, to see what's wrong with the house. Because you go, but you first see the house, you're a guest, you go, oh, it's a wonderful house. And, but then once you think I'm gonna buy it, like this might be the right one, boom. Now you have to scrutinize and, and analyze and what's wrong with this relationship? And does he really love me? And is he the right guy for me? Am I settling with him or do I deserve him? Uh, is he a player? Or is he interested in, you know, so many questions come up. It's natural and it's normal and it's very important that you not sabotage yourself at that period of time by pursuing him more to gain reassurance. That's not the time to seek out reassurance. And that's not the time uh, to doubt that, well, if I have doubts, then he must not be the one. You know, some people think that life is just this, when you find the right guy or the right woman, then you know for sure. And if you have doubts, you won't have doubts because they're the right person for you. That's not the case. It's pretty normal for most people to go through a stage of, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. And that's the second stage. Third stage is commitment stage. You feel like maybe this is the one, he could be the one or she could be the one. And he says, I'm gonna make a commitment, not gonna date anybody else. We're gonna take this time, it's you and me. And Basically, I'm not dating anybody else. I'm not having sex with anybody else. And don't think you're in stage three until you have the discussion, are you monogamous? If you're not monogamous, you're still gonna, oh, you're, he's gonna bounce back and forth uh, in uncertainty. He's gonna miss you, have sex with you, and then he's gonna pull away from you. And then if he has opportunities, he'll go have sex with somebody else, and then he can't bond with you. He said, the only way you grow in love is through monogamy. Monogamy is so valuable. Uh, and we'll talk more about that. These are all like very important topics. Today, people are thinking, oh, monogamy is old fashioned. We should be open-minded and liberal and have sex with many people. Yeah, that's the dating one stage. You wanna stay at the stage where you're lusting after others and being dissatisfied again and again, <laughs> do that. <laughs> uh, I have no judgment on it, you know? I was a, 
you know, I'm almost 70 now, but when I was, uh, I was a monk for nine years, I was very happy being a monk because I meditated. It was a purposeful time. And then after that, I had lots of sex. Okay. I hadn't had sex in nine years. <laughs> so I was like a very busy beaver out there having, having lots of sex and having fun. There's no shame in that. That's, that was uh, sex education for me. But then it turned out that I realized I needed to have the reason I wanted sex ultimately is a physical experience of love mm -hmm. and that, you know, love is the most important thing in the world. And unfortunately women understand that most do <laughs> that we need love. And so they're willing to put the brakes on the sex thing until they feel the love. Uh, Cause men just got the sex thing going and they don't even know why they want sex other than it just feels good. But actually sex with somebody opens the doorway for feeling more love for experiencing greater depth of intimacy and for bonding if it's done correctly. <laughs> if it's not done correctly through monogamy, it just creates confusion. So I emphasize the importance of monogamy to bond and see where the relationship can go. Then the fourth stage uh, is intimacy. Not that you're not having some intimacy, but I'm talking about a deeper level of intimacy of, of, of a deeper vulnerable level where suddenly your buttons are being pushed. See, once you start having sex with somebody, now you're so close, your buttons all around love get pushed. And now you're, you might even go through your doubts again and you might get upset about things, you might feel insecure about things, but it's a deeper level of intimacy that's triggering, triggering unresolved issues from childhood. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, you know, I think most people today are kind of cool with that. Uh, you know, everything's really about childhood, but some people go, oh, you can't think everything's about childhood. For me, 90% of anything that upsets me has to do with my past. It'd be like, you know, if I was burned in the past, I put my finger towards the fire, I get upset. Oh, fire, fire. It's because I was burned in the past. Mm -hmm. If you haven't been burned in the fast, past, you don't get burned so easily. I mean, you don't fear fire so much. You just say, oh, wisdom, don't get close to fire. But if you, you know... This is a deeper level of intimacy, which means you're in this relationship, you're having a committed relationship, you're physically intimate, you're gonna to go to a level of deeper emotional intimacy where your buttons get pushed mm -hmm. and you're gonna suddenly overreact. Yeah, everybody's gotta know that your partner, couples argue and fight and they get mad about things. We have to recognize at that stage that we're overreacting, we're being triggered. Now there's legitimacy, yes, you said this or you didn't do that or you did that, it upsets me, but 90% of that upset has to do with unresolved issues from our past. And that's the test. Can we start taking responsibility within ourselves to find love again, find love again, find love again. And when you can do that, when the core of your being can, find, can lose love and find love again, you're in stage five where you recognize you wake up one morning and you go, she's the one, he's the one, that's it. Oh. And, and, you know, some of us don't have to go to such deep levels of, of our unresolved issues from childhood. We may not have as many, but it takes going to deeper levels, arguments, getting your button, your, your buttons pushed. I think everybody understands your partner says something and suddenly you have this strong reaction to it. Well, that's just, they're just a trigger and your feelings are hurt because as a child, you felt excluded, you felt left out, you feel disappointed on some level, you felt unworthy. And that unworthiness, if you go right to sex, it's gonna trigger those feelings of unworthiness, which activates your feelings of insecurity. And as a woman, particularly, you tend to seek reassurance. <laughs> so now you're gonna seek, is he, are you the one for me? And your brain goes into the hypercritical, hyper-doubting, hyper-worrying, hyper-insecurity. These are all various things that one would normally feel if you're buying a house. It's normal to think, okay, what's wrong with this house? I like this house. I want to buy this house. Now your brain goes into what's wrong with this house. That's the second stage. So now you have an overview of the five stages of dating. And, and now, you know, if he's, if he's not the right guy for you, so awesome. Well, how do you know? Okay. So coming back to the original question, <laughs> <laughs> how do you know he's not the right guy for you? First of all, you don't know until you do know. And that was my answer to that. Mm -hmm. And so you don't experience that he's the right guy, but you have a feeling, you follow your feelings. Now, if you're a woman, this is very important in the stage of attraction, first stage. If you have a history of being attracted to men who turn you on right away, you just get all excited about it. Then that's your history. You know, 
that's the wrong guy. Right away, you know it's the wrong guy. If it stimulates you sexually, just not even knowing a guy, he's the wrong guy. And if that's your pattern, that's called daddy issues. Part of you is still wanting to improve, dad, get, get daddy to love you. So you'll tend to be attracted to men who are players, who are married, who are dangerous, who are literally unavailable to you, are just the wrong guy for you. So if that's your pattern, and that's a very common pattern for women, if you're turned on to a guy right away, he's the wrong guy. But if that's a big pattern in your life, then it means that the right guy will not turn you on. He will seem kind of boring. So that guy, if he's boring, don't cancel him out right away. Practice these relationship skills of learning how not to be a people pleaser in the relationship, how to hold your ground, how to be naked, completely authentic with your mindset. And if he's still attracted to you, he might be the right guy. That means don't be a people pleaser. A people pleaser, I give you an example because I was a people pleaser as a young guy to some extent. But I'm this young guy, 18, 19 years old. I'm a group of in crowd kids and I wasn't the in crowd at that point. So they said, oh, John, did you see this movie? I went, yeah. And then they said, what'd you think? And it was a controversial movie. It's kind of like, who did you vote for? <laughs> I'm like, oh, I don't know if they'll approve of me. So I panic because I want to give the right answer so they'll be my friends. There's a tendency in women to give up who they, what they really think in order to have somebody like you. Don't do anything to get him to like you. He should like you more than you like him. He should earn his way in. That's the right guy. And then you can practice new skills of learning how to be completely authentic about what you think, what you believe, but you do it in such a way where you're practicing a skill where you're sharing yourself without trying to change him. You see, it's differences that attract, differences attract. So you have to have a different perspective from him and he'll have a different perspective, but he didn't hear my talk. So he's gonna to try to change yours. Oh, you shouldn't think that. And then you practice not taking it personally, but realizing he's just trying to help. He doesn't know how to listen. And you say, oh, I get it. You know, We could have different points of view, no big deal. I'm not attached to my point of view. I just think it's right, but I can hear your point of view. Tell me why you think that and just be a, a listener. Why? And you say to him three magic words. Well, that makes sense. That's a good idea. I can see your point. I disagree completely, but <laughs> you don't have to agree. That is such a good skill to where you're not making life decisions with somebody. You're practicing differences without having to be a people pleaser. Mm -hmm. Then as a woman, the way you know is that's intellectual attraction. You start to feel safer and more attracted to him. He'll feel more attracted to you. If you can't be authentic and express your mind, and he doesn't stay attracted to you, you he's the wrong guy. You know, it's just so, so many, so many guys will say, don't talk, don't talk, let's just have sex. That's because if you share your mind, he loses his sexual desire. You want to put him off, put him off. But a good skill to put him off on the sex right away is when he wants it, he talk about it. You know, he'll say, oh, you say, not yet, not yet. He said, well, when, when? You just say, oh, all I know is I need to go slow, get to know you, but I'd love to have sex with you. Just not yet. You have to ease him off because men have so much pressure to have sex right away. Biologically, he's turned on to you. It feels like I can have sex. He doesn't know that his sex will not be a bonding experience, a more fulfilling experience, unless he knows who he's having sex with, knows your thinking and this difference. And also emotionally, he has to provide for you a sense of comfort and ease, doing nice things for you to make you feel special and important. You ask for help. If he doesn't know how to do it, you ask him. You say, okay, I'd like you to take me to dinner next week. And here's three things I like to do. Ask, and he does it. Don't tell him what to do. Just let him know these are three things I like to do. And you pick. And make sure that he pays for your meal. I'm old fashioned about this. Why? Because when he does something for you, your emotions of gratitude and appreciation come up, as well as your resistance to feeling appreciation come up. Many women can't receive and then you'll never find the right guy. So he's got to do things for you. You feel appreciation, just little things, compliments, driving you places, uh, providing things for you, planning things for you, but don't expect him to be a mind reader. Tell him, here's three things I like to do. You decide and surprise me. That way you don't feel like you're controlling him because you want to feel swept off your feet. And that's going to allow you to connect with your feminine intuition, which only comes forth when you're stress-free and then you have a sense of knowing, then you know he's the right guy. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and like and share this video below. 
Also, we have a juicy playlist course for you on how to magnetize the right man for you and go to magnetizeyourman.com and take your free quiz to get more personalized strategies from me. I'm so excited to see you in the next video. Much love. Mwah!